Hi, everyone. Dr. B here. Again, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast about oral health, specifically functional oral health. So a big, big part of functional oral health is the biome. And again, uh, you've heard me talk a lot about this, but this may surprise you, a source for oral microbiome dysbiosis. Uh, and it goes kind of back to a uh, I think it was a YouTube post that my daughter and I did. This was uh, before COVID. And we were very surprised. It was one of the the, the biggest um, uh, hits we've gotten uh, in terms of needed information. So uh, I thought I would give an update on how to clean your oral appliance. And again, now with knowledge of the oral microbiome and testing, I'll explain how they're related. Uh, being... Cleaning this properly, your oral appliance, is is very, very important. And I discovered this uh, indirectly through some of the testing I've done on my oral microbiome. So, so um, let's get started. I'm just going to give you my routine and, and, and justify why I think this is uh, uh, so important. So uh, when the Bristol test first came out, I tested. Um, I did really well. Uh, I was surprised, actually. Uh, and the halitosis score ha was not yet in place, but the beauty of this test is that retroactively, as these scores become available, or the ability to uh, to read the data and and then and then come to a conclusion based on the different types of bacteria that they see and and other organisms, um, they 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 come up with a score. And I didn't do well on the halitosis score, so. I thought about it for a long time. I started scraping my tongue more aggressively, more often. That helped a lot. But the other source kind of took me a while to figure out. It was my oral appliance. So I wear one every single night. It's a mandibular advancement device. Uh, it just keeps my chin forward so I don't snore. Um, but I had this device. It's been 12 years. Um, same device, just changed the rubber bands. Nothing has changed. It's gotten a little discolored, um, but I would always just soak it in this stainless steel container. Again, I'm not a big fan of plastic. This is on our website. You can serve, makes wonderful stainless steel containers, silicone tops. And I would just change the water daily, add baking soda, sometimes uh, Castile soap, no detergents, no uh, uh, cleansing, uh, what are these called? Uh, <laughs> denture cleansers uh, or tablets uh, because there are chemicals in here that I'm concerned about. Uh, okay, so it gets rinsed off. Actually, it could get impregnated in all the porous surfaces of your device. And, and I just don't think we should be aggressively cleaning a device with an aggressive cleaner that could affect the, the bacteria in our mouth. So, so I'm gonna talk more about this. I've got plenty of blog posts on this. Um, Anyway, I'm going to talk more about it. Uh, let's stay on point. So, so this, I would smell, and it didn't smell great, and it smelled a little bit like my bad breath, uh, halitosis. And so I started pulling, you know, doing swabs off of this and growing them on petri dishes. And this thing was not clean. Um, it was not as clean as it should be, and it when you put it in the mouth all night long, six to seven to eight hours, it could be contributing or altering or modifying, remodulating my oral microbiome, one's oral microbiome. So interesting, right? Um, anyway, so I was looking for a more natural way of cleaning this. I still use baking soda. I use distilled water. I change it daily. By the way, keep your devices soaking in clean water all day, don't let them sit out because when they dry and then they get wet in the mouth again for six hours and then 12 to 14 hours out again and they're dry, that volumetric change of drying to being wet, expansion, it is not good for the device. So keep it moist, that it keeps it pliable. A lot of these devices are designed to be soft so that they can grip the teeth without really being painful to put in or difficult to take out. So keep them moist. That's what I was doing. Uh, I was adding some very, uh, not even a soap, a Castile soap, just for kind of that minty flavor. Um, the baking soda, I would use white vinegar once a week for about 15, 20 minutes. That was fine. It was definitely cleaner after that. 
but over time it wasn't enough. So anyway, what I discovered is, and actually it was my daughter who discovered it. She sent some over, the comp told the company to send some over. And ironically, I clean my records. I have a, I, I like to listen to records. I clean my records the same way. And in my office, I clean my dental instruments the same way. I use an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, this, of course, is for home use. It's very small. It's called the Dental Pod. It's an English company, Zima Dental. And I've been using it now for about four or five months. And I'm literally culturing bacteria off my oral appliance after using this. The first day or two, I did use the tablets. Then I gave it a long soak. I have not used the tablet since. Again, more on that later. Uh, and just distilled water and two or three zaps of the on button. I think it's a two or five minute cycle uh, made it noticeably cleaner based on my cultures, but also on the smell. That that should be your, your diagnostic there. That should be the, the tip off point. If you can do that and not, scrunch up a little bit and go and recoil and go, oh my God, that sounds, that smells familiar. Uh, that's a good sign. That means it's clean. So again, think about records for most of you, hopefully know what a record is. Tiny little microscopic grooves where a lot of human protein can get caught from finger touching oils, uh, particle dust, uh, residue from manufacturing. That all gets caught in there. My ultrasonic cleaner makes the records absolutely pristine, clear and quieter. And actually uh, there's less wear when you play a clean record as opposed to a dirty record. So so uh, also dental instruments, that is the standard of care uh, with a very strong solution, of course. And that is before autoclaving under pressure, but the, the debris has to be removed from the instruments before it gets cooked in that in that steam autoclave under pressure, uh, under vacuum. So actually it's pressure. Uh, anyway, so this is, I have found this to be absolutely wonderful. Um, I have no association with the company whatsoever. Uh, we do have it in our store. Uh, so you should, it's easy to find. Uh, I do recommend you buy it. You can buy it on Amazon. If you don't like it, you can return it. Um, it's, it hasn't broken down. It lasts, it's easy to clean. Uh, it, it does come with a little plug and a little wall wart. It takes up very little space. I do wish, like my professional um, uh, dental instrument cleaner in the practice, the tub comes out. If you want to clean this, you have to unplug it. You have to pull the, you know, grab the whole thing, wash it out, which I do daily. That's a little inconvenient. Maybe a second gen version of this will have a removable basin or, or um, cleaning chamber. So, but anyway, highly recommend this. It's quiet. It does clean my device. And remember, I started off with a, a device that was pretty dirty to begin with, uh, nine, 10, 11 years of wear. And in the last six, seven months, this has been wonderful. So, so I do think that a lot of bacteria uh, and that smell, of course, and you can tell by the smell, get embedded in our devices. And if you're wearing it all night long, that could have an effect on your oral microbiome. Again, you wanna have brushed your teeth and flossed. You want a nice thin biofilm. You can certainly oil pull before going to bed, but you, you wanna be clean because at night, saliva flow drops, your mouth may be open, even if you're mouth taping, I mean, less so, but, and certainly as you get older, saliva flow is lessens at night. I mean, the saliva glands kind of shut down. They're not needed, not fully, but your mouth will tend to be dry. And saliva is key for the oral microbiome. That is the basis for its existence. It needs that. It's a substrate. It has nutrients in it. It has minerals in it and, and enzymes and all sorts of uh, you know, organisms and substances that help keep the oral microbiome viable and safe. So, so anyway, I would recommend using that uh, after I put my device in the uh, you can serve container. I travel with this. It's in water. I put it into this little uh, stasher. Uh, I love stashers. We have them on our website as well. Um, anyway, I've never had a blowout in luggage from this even inside of a plane. I travel with this. I don't want to lose this and checked uh, baggage, of course, uh, especially if I want to sleep well at my destination. I, I wouldn't recommend the tablets. Maybe if you start off like I did with a device that 
had years of stuff on it, you know, give it a few zaps. Um, certainly use white vinegar. You can use any solution you really want in here. Um, uh, I think baking soda is still very viable. It, it uh, keeps the pH of the water higher as it's soaking in there and it does kill bacteria, but not because it's bactericidal necessarily. It's just that bacteria like more of an acidic environment. Anyway, I, I hope this is of some help. Most of us are wearing some form of oral appliance we wear them for a long time and they get pretty grungy and they start smelling bad. So do do the smell test. I think that is, it's not very scientific, but it's very telling. And I think it's a good test for you at home without having to pull out Petri dishes and cotton swabs and then certainly get, get your oral microbiome tested. Um, but this has helped me a lot. And I haven't found out yet, but I'm hoping that my halitosis score goes down. I'm pretty sure it will, but I will follow up with that uh, with probably another video. So again, thanks for listening. Um, if you want more information about, for example, the, the neurological effects, potential effects of efferdent, polydent, these little tablets that um, uh, are sold to consumers, uh, there's a persulfate in there. They're pretty much all the same flavoring and coloring of the tablet and packaging is all different. Uh, if you overuse that, uh, certainly a lot of people confuse this for an Alka-Seltzer, um, you know, the blue packaging, the blue tablet, they put it in water and swallow it. They do end up in the emergency room with convulsions. Um, again, they, the companies were not forced to uh, relabel their products. It was recommended, and I don't think they have at this point. This is something I found out a long time ago by uh, reading uh, submittals to the FDA complaints. No conclusions made, but uh, someone who has access to that database can start looking at, uh, for example, I'll just look up denture tablets. I'll go to the brand, and then I will look through that list, and then I'll notice, gosh, a lot of people are being admitted to the emergency room. That, that would be a complaint from a consumer. Again, no conclusion is made. But again, I did a little research. Persulfate does have some neurological effects. Probably the amounts we're using on a daily basis if used properly. But again, there are so many chemicals out there. If you don't need these, the ultrasonic, which is mechanical um, action, uh, that ultrasonic energy basically just slowly works away at all the debris that has been captured by your device. So again, as few chemicals as possible. We can't get rid of all the chemicals in our life, but uh, we can try. And again, we just don't want to reach that threshold of having had too much exposure to something or to many things, whatever synergy lies in that. And, uh, and then we start getting sick. So just one thing we can uh, check, check uh, take off the list. So anyway, hope that was of some help. If you need more information on the persulfate uh, issue, on our older post on cleaning retainers, keeping them clean, keeping them moist, why you wanna keep moist, don't let them dry out. They actually can change uh, dimensionally, uh, even volumetrically, and then they won't fit. You have spent a lot of money, I'm sure, on these devices and you'd have to start over. So keep them moist, keep them clean, and make sure that they don't smell. Um, I, I do think these things kind of have their own little biomes, if not well taken care of. Um, as a dentist, I have seen a lot of devices. Uh, <laughs> I won't get into too much detail other than I have seen just about everything. Uh, green colored stuff, black colored stuff, fuzz. Um, I don't want to call it mold. That would be unlikely in a wet environment. But it's amazing how uh, bad these these things and and uh, look and smell. So so keep yours clean. That's good for your mouth. Uh, along with this, scrape your tongue and your halitosis score will improve. I'm pretty sure it will. So again, go by the smell, buy one of these units, and you should be fine. Uh, don't use toothpaste and uh, and a toothbrush or an electric toothbrush on your devices. It can be abrasive. Uh, it can reduce the shine of like an aligner. Um, uh, you want those things to be pretty invisible when you're wearing them and it can scratch and it can wear things down. And again, you're applying a lot of chemicals and emulsifiers and surfactants and you could have fluoride in there and then you put it in your mouth for six to seven, eight hours. Who knows what that exposure uh, is equal to. So um, anyway, uh, more information, go to askthedentist.com. If you're looking for a functional provider, 
uh, that would have this discussion with you or would even think of this um, and be concerned about the oral microbiome, which they should be. If your dentist isn't, you're not really seeing a dentist, uh, make sure you're getting all this information. The oral microbiome is everything when it comes to oral health and even systemic health. So uh, the directory would be at askthedentist.com slash directory. Thank you so much for listening. See you in the next episode. Uh, by the way, if you're listening to this uh, in your car or on your iPhone, just the audio portion, there is a video portion, which we will post also on our YouTube channel. So join us there as well. See you soon. Thanks for listening and uh, stay well.